My name is, name is Tim and I'm a woodlander and I live and run the Cherrywood project. After I left school, I did a lot of travelling, uh, mainly jungles and deserts. Although people didn't have very much, people were always very happy and friendly and welcoming. And in many ways it seemed that those who had least were actually the happiest and the most willing to share what they had. So that was a, a background to how I began to think about how we as a society operate and how we seem to have so much and yet not be able to be very happy. I'd always had an interest in self-sufficiency, so I was lucky enough to have enough money to buy a small holding in Dorset. Now I try and work as much as possible with hand, hand tools and hand skills. What inspired me was going on a course doing green woodwork, so I, I made a chair with a lady called Gudrun Leitz, who's a German lady who's been living in this country a long time. I was so inspired by the immediacy of the way in which you work with the wood that's actually growing around you. Being able to work without power in a beautiful environment. For me, I take a lot of pleasure from making things out of wood. I like the shapes that wood makes, the fact that it grows again and so is sustainable, and the fact that you can gather it without harm from the environment around you and know that it will grow back. So many people inspired me to do stuff. I've taken so many things from so many places, including not just in this country, from different cultures, different ideas. The sustainable buildings, a lot of the structures are used worldwide. So for example, the oven we cook in, there are versions of that oven from all over the world. And they're just made very simply, fired by wood, and they work brilliantly. Here we live on uh, clay on top of oolitic limestone. One thing we've got in abundance is clay. What we do is make cob. Cob is what we call it here. Adobe is what they call it in South America and Spain. And it's a mixture of something mixed with clay to take it down to about between 20 and 25 percent. And then straw in order to provide the reinforcement. And in some places you can dig it up and it comes out the right mixture. Well, there are cottages that are 500 years old in Devon and Cornwall that are made of cob. In order to maintain harmony in the landscape, rather than come in with big machines and destroy the soil, what we do is we maintain enough stock to be sustainable and make sure that we replace things as we use them. Making sure that you are looking to the future to make sure that what you take now can be replaced. Food is really part of a, a more holistic approach to living on the land. This is working on sound permaculture principles is you use what you've got. Every site is site specific. The forest is obviously not the best place to grow food, but you can grow some food, certainly, and perhaps you can grow fungi and wild food. So you're limited only by the site in your imagination. Probably the most unlooked for thing, and yeah, definitely the most rewarding, is the level of community involvement. When I started here, I didn't even think that there would be other people who would want to come and work with me. After a year, I was thinking, this is really hard work. <laughs> and then the first volunteer appeared, saying, do you want some help? And since then, I've just had so many volunteers, all of whom have given their time for free and their efforts and it really completely changed my vision of the project.